This is Yardley and Olaf from the Talking About Walkers podcast. And we're so blessed to have an opportunity to talk with Vincent Ward, our favorite prison inmate. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm good, man. I'm here at Walker Stalker Atlanta, having a good time, man. You know, it's a pleasure being here with you guys. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, no doubt, as always. Has it been pretty cool since you've been down uh, in the A? It's, it's cool because I make it cool. You know, it's cool because, you know, ain't no funny style over here with me, man. I make everybody feel like family. Man, no doubt. Now, when you when you come to conventions like this and you get the outpouring and so much support from the fans, how does that feel as an actor to know that people really care about what you're doing and they enjoy you, man? Dude, it's an honor because I didn't even know anything about these conventions before I started working on this show. And for somebody to take the time out to, you know, say, appreciate my work or want to take a picture or get an autograph, man, it's very humbling. And that's very interesting, man, because, you know, since you've gotten off the show, you know, myself, Olaf, and Kente, we always talk about the brothers that's on the show. Uh-oh. And, <laughs> and you're like the only brother that's been on the show that was strong. You were assertive. You knew what you had to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had a heart as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how do you feel with other Wire alums? Like, you know, you got Chad Coleman mm -hmm. and Lawrence on the show. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like, you know, they're, they've they been representing to the highest of their ability? Are they putting them in a good place? Um, they, do, they doing what they do. Yeah. You know, as far as me, I wish it wouldn't have looked like when it was time for me to go, it was time for them to come. Yeah. You know, that's the only problem I really and truly have about it. And I didn't even realize, nor did I think about it, until the fans kept talking about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you keep hearing, why does one black guy got to leave and another one come? And then I'm like, dang, that is true, because when I came, T-Dog left. Yep. And when I left, Chad came. No and this is, a, this is the truth, this is a true uh, statement right here. A uh, guy on Twitter hit me up and said, Vince, when I saw Chad running through the woods, Tyrese, Running through the woods, yeah. I knew you was going to die that episode. Wow. And this is coming from a white gentleman. So that's <laughs> – <laughs> well, I have to let you know, you know, when it comes to the inmates, you know, you and Lou Temple, y'all brought the house down, man. And it's so unfortunate, you know, that it had to be that way, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So just to let you know, you've been my favorite bro on the show because you got – you know, even though you're out, you got in and out. You know, I don't know if it's necessarily the way you want it to go, right. but they didn't have a chance to make you moist, man, so big up. Right. Hey, man, hey, that's <laughs> not being moist. <laughs> have me a chance to grow. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know when season <laughs> four, five, and six. <laughs> no, no doubt. Now, since you've been on The Walking Dead, man, um, what have you been up to? I mean, thank you all very much. Thank you very much. We got this well, point. a couple weeks ago, I shot a show called Two Broke Girls. It's coming on CBS. And I'm actually up for the part of Suge Knight in the new Tupac uh, movie with John, with John Singleton. Oh, really? And Yeah, man. And um, I'm doing some plays. I got a play coming up based on domestic violence called The Conversation. Okay. Doing some more of these conventions. And my own show that I created, which is a traveling show called The Chill Spot, which our first stop would be in Barbados. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good place to chill. Y'all are ready. That's a, that's a spot you want to chill at. Now, now doing plays in theater, you know, we talk to a lot of actors, and it seems that they say, you know, to kind of build up your abilities. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like theater is something that every actor should probably experience? To you know, I, I started off doing theater. That okay. was the very first thing I done in uh, back in, in Columbus, Ohio. And I always say a lot of people can go from theater to movies and TV, but a lot of people can't come from movies and TV to theater. Oh, okay. You know, so I don't know why that is. It's like I guess they feel uncomfortable with the whole uh, the audience being right there because there's no cut yeah. in theater. No doubt. You got to have some chops to be able to make 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 things go in theater. Now, what can fans outside of Two Broke Girls and those types of things, are there any other movie projects uh, that you're attached to? Yeah, I did a movie called Ulterior Motives. Um, got one coming out called The Choir Director. Uh, got a couple of pilots coming out, doing some auditioning still. You know, hopefully I get to the point where I don't have to do any auditioning. They just yeah. say, hey, we want you to come. And that happened one time, and I was shocked, and it made me feel good that the show Psych asked me to just come to the show uh, and not have an audition. Oh, man, hey, speaking of doing existence, man, it's, it's going to happen, bro. Yeah, most and, definitely. And we follow you. Now, 
being here and just seeing this type of things, you know, as just as an actor, mm -hmm. when you see the love and the support that the fans give anything that you're associated with this much love, is that kind of inspiring for you to kind of give back even more, knowing mm -hmm. that people are that into what you're doing? Most definitely, man. And what, a couple other things that inspire me is I have grandkids. I got four grandkids, four kids, you know, a loving mother and father. And my thing is, I want to get to the point where I'll be able to leave my grandkids something yeah. and be able to put, get to the point that I'm taking care of my family. Mm -hmm. You know, because if, before anything, your family comes first. No doubt. You know, I love the, I don't like to call people fans. I love the social media family. Yeah. But the fam, my family comes first, man. And that's, that's true. And for people to say, you're doing a great job, it makes me work even harder. Because it gets some days that you want to you wanna quit. You know, we getting a quit sign right now, so. <laughs> yeah, we are. Well, thank you so much for taking this time out with us. And we're going to get you on for a proper interview because you're a very inspirational man, and we like what, what you're doing, and we want our fan base to know what you're up to, and we want you, wanna, you, know, say, we want you right. to keep it moving, you know, going forward, man. Hey, man, my ultimate goal is not only to play Oscar, but to win an Oscar. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, Yardley. I'm Olaf. Talking about walkers, we'll get at you soon. Peace.